Okay, today I'm going to present you a demo with the Oracle database operator. Okay, it means I can create a database using Kubernetes with the database operator. Again, the use case comes from a customer. This customer has 100 developers and each time a developer uh, creates a new branch, then he needs a DB for himself in order to implement the feature and to do tests. Okay. To do that, we can use a very cheap solution. It means we can create a free Oracle database in Kubernetes. The free Oracle database is a free version of the new Oracle 23 database, but you can use for example, Express Edition for database that are more old than the 23 AI DB. Okay. So you can see on OCI, I have a cluster with a node pool, a cluster for Kubernetes with a node pool that has three worker node, nodes and each worker nodes can run okay pod and in this pod i can have an oracle db okay but to create a db in kubernetes i used the database operator you can find it on github sure follow the documentation to install the operator in kubernetes and then as you can see, you can create a lot of different kind of databases, autonomous, single instance, and so on, DBCS, and so on, and so on. Multi-tenant database. Okay. Personally, I use single instance database. It means a pre-built database in Kubernetes that need no storage, because you know, I just want a simple DB to create a schema, create tables, insert data, and do tests for one developer. Okay. To do that, I have a project, QuizDB. I'm using Flyway to create the schema because Flyway is very nice to version the schema. You know, I have version one, version dot one, one dot one, one dot two, and so on. And for the Oracle operator, I have a YAML file here. The YAML file say, okay, create a DB free edition. Okay. Use this secret for the password of the administrator. Use this image. Okay. If I want to have external storage with OCI block storage, I can do that, or I can just add storage directly in the container image, very simple, and just create one database. Okay. I choose load balancer true in order to have a load balancer in OCI, OCI load balancer. So I will have a public IP in order to reach the DB and to create my schema to insert data and so on. Okay. Now, I have here a workflow for GitHub. This workflow, okay, will do steps. In the steps, I have get DB, install kubectl, create the DB, wait that the DB is okay, install Oracle SQL CL, okay, and then run the script in order to create the schema with a table. Okay. And you can see this workflow can start when an issue is created and a specific issue with a specific title, create underscore db underscore name of the db. Okay. Now I have a look. I am a developer. I want to implement a new feature. In a new branch dev, I have a branch main. 
I, I want to create a new branch dev, I need a DB dev. So I created an issue create DB dev. Okay. And this issue, then the event was trapped and the workflow run as run. Okay. Looking at the workflow, deploy DB. You can see all the step. Get the DB name from the issue tip title dev. Okay. Update the DB operator YAML file here because I want, you know, to have a specific name here for my specific branch. Okay. Okay. Then install kubectl, list all DB. Okay. Only one DB before was here for the main branch. Okay. Create the DB. Okay, create dev. Wait that the DB is created. Okay, DB dev is ready. Get the new URL, okay, of the DB. Then install Oracle SQL CL and create the application schema. Okay. If I use kubectl in order to see what is uh, what components are in the Kubernetes cluster. I can see here the operator that are running several versions because if one version is stopped, then the other uh, the other pod runs the operator to have high availability. And then now I have three DB, two DB, sorry. The main DB here and the dev DB here. Okay, you can see here the public IP. So I will destroy these two VM after the video. I have two pods that are running the pod with the main DB and the pod with the dev DB. Okay. Very fast. How long to create the DB? It was very, very fast, you know, one minute and 34 seconds to have a DB ready for a new branch for a developer. Okay. After doing that, so the developer can create here a new config file properties in order to run Flyway. QuizDB Flyway, migrate, okay, dev. And as you can see, I created the quiz flyway user schema. That is the schema of, of my application. And I create all the tables. I insert data in the tables. And so the database is ready for me in order to implement my new feature. Now, if when I will have finished uh, to implement the feature to do test and all is okay i can create an issue drop db dev and the database will be destroyed so as you can see it's very 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 simple way to get a new db in okay for each developer just remember do not use the okay uh, wizard to create standard wizard to create a cluster. Do not forget to increase the size of the boot volume of the worker node because the images of Oracle DB are quite heavy and high. Okay. And remember, you need some CPU. Okay. To in order to run. Okay. Oracle DB. It's not just, you know, an Oracle DB on Kubernetes. It's not just a simple REST service, you know, it's an Oracle DB that needs OCPU and memory. Okay. And as you see here, in the past two years ago, I used exactly the same strategy, but in order to create an autonomous DB with Terraform. Okay. So you can do exactly the same, create an issue and have an autonomous DB that is created 
for a new branch automatically using Terraform. Okay, but today the goal is to explain you why sometimes it's super interesting to use Oracle Database Operator in Kubernetes. Thank you for your attention.